So the old tune is gone. No more beasts of England. Now we're singing about Animal Farm. And this notion of the degradation of memory or the usurping of memory by the the by those in control continues. So the the the, it, it, the animals are starting to completely forget what uh, life was like prior to the revolution. Um, mythology around uh, Napoleon continues uh, to grow. You know, poems are now being written about him. You know, the the, the great leader. He's losing more. Uh, Napoleon is 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 basically it's the apotheosis of Napoleon. He's becoming so deified and turned into some kind of saintly figure of some form, but again, a figurehead as opposed to a living uh, a, a leader. Uh, Napoleon, uh, he, he's conducting more business deals, and of course, Napoleon is, uh, is well, Napoleon's not, not really used to dealing in business, and so he's easily swindled. And of course, when he does make his mistakes, then the, uh, uh, the, 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 the political apparatus has to try and figure out how to sell this as a victory. So this idea of errors being sold uh, or failures being sold as successes and that they, they is trying to strengthen this notion of the infallibility of the leadership. Um, and of course, that's all what a mythology essentially of the leader is trying to, to build. Uh, pictures of Napoleon, you know, large pictures are, are starting to appear. And so there is this fusion of no Napoleon, the figure, with the whole notion of leadership. He is leadership. And in that sense, uh, 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 more and more of Squidward's gaslighting and his propaganda. Uh, so that's kicking into, in, in, into high gear. And um, this, this cover-up uh, uh, is... Uh, it, and it, it is, is all part and parcel of the selling of Napoleon. And of course, we also have, again, another attack on uh, uh, Animal Farm. And in this case, uh, the windmill is, is, which has been rebuilt, right? Remember the windmill was built and destroyed in a storm. And then there was a political way of covering that up, blaming it on Snowball. Now uh, the windmill has been rebuilt. It's bigger, it's stronger, and this time uh, it's blown up. So it's not just toppled where you could just essentially put it back together and rebuild it, uh, you know, with some more supports or more stones. It's actually built up. It's actually destroyed. And so, uh, well, how do you deal with that? You know, this kind of a loss. Well, the invade the human invaders of Animal Farm are repelled. But it's a, the selling of what's traditionally known as a pirate victory. It's, yeah, they actually defeated the human invaders. But, you know, the, the, uh, the, the windmills blown up, lots of animals were killed. It was essentially, you know, almost a loss. So you have to redefine what victory means. And some of the characters are like, well, you know, why is this a victory if we just held on to what we have? You know, well, that's this, the essential notion of victory. So Squealer is once again redefining terminology. And as uh, Napoleon and the pigs discover more uh, human vices and start to take them on, starting to drink alcohol, which again, like sleeping in a bed, uh, that was forbidden. But yeah, what does it mean to consume alcohol now? What, uh, what exactly are we talking about? Well, it's not alcohol per se. Drinking alcohol per se isn't bad. It's drinking alcohol to excess. That's bad. So now we have a redefinition uh, or a redefining uh, of, of the notion of uh, what it means to drink, even drink alcohol and why it was and what did we really mean at the time. So again, this uh, continual appropriation of everything by the uh, the governing uh, structure. Yeah, and so uh, and then Napoleon even starts, to, you know, producing his own alcohol. But probably it's not going to be that good when you start. In chapter nine, it's just a, a continuation of the development of sort of the Napoleon mythology. Um, he's tiring lots of children. Um, so this is a the, the, the pig class, the privileged class just keeps growing larger and larger. And uh, new rules come into place, right? And you have the step side rule. So when any animal encounters a pig, that animal other than, oh, and anybody other than pigs, get out of the way of the pigs. And um, 
Uh, rationing occurs, uh, so rationing, but not for the pegs. So again, power, privilege being just further and further entrenched. The, the, it just doesn't become partly, it becomes fully entrenched over a while. So we can see more or less where, where this is going as you having a, a, a duplication of the powers and the privileges that were overthrown in the original revolution. They're back and back more or less with a, arguably maybe a vengeance. Um, and how is this always interpreted? Well, everything is interpreted as we got those nasty humans out of power. We animals, it's animal farm now, so it's us. You can't really oppress yourself, can you? So again, Squealer is, uh, is, is, is selling this package uh, of, of propaganda, right? He's gaslighting. What do you mean you're oppressed? How can you opp oppress uh, yourself? And so uh, this notion of once you just got rid of remember old major, right? Just get rid of the humans and everything will be just awesome. So um, the notion of freedom is slowly being redefined, not freedom to do what you want, but freedom that the humans are gone now. So that's that makes us free. Uh, there's statistics, you know, all kinds of statistics, you know, what are, 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 are brought up. So when you say, hey, things are bad, well, statistically, they're better than they were before burying people in information. And maybe not all of it is false. That's an important thing too. Sometimes you can just swamp people with information until they don't know what to think, right? So you can overload the system. So just like you would overload your computer, right? It'll, it'll crash. You can overload uh, the minds of the citizens as well. You just flood them with statistics. Maybe they're not always false. Probably more often than not, they are. Um, and so those are used to drown out uh, any kinds of feelings or anything that might not be in service of the state. Well, after the, uh, uh, the destruction of the, the second instantiation of the windmill, Boxer, you know, who has been working and working and working, he finally works himself into a serious uh, injury. And, and, you know, it's Pretty sad because he's looking forward to retiring and maybe learning a couple more letters of the alphabet, maybe uh, hanging out with Benjamin, his old buddy, and they'll go off in supposedly this area for the animals that retire, right? You know, the old days, the bad old days of Manor Farm under Jones, when you were an animal and you were no longer useful, you were sold or slaughtered or whatever, You, were, but you certainly didn't have retirement. That was a new concept for animals, and that animal farm was to provide. Animals got to retire. Um, no, not, not exactly, and probably one of the darkest moments of, uh, of the novel, uh, Boxer, who, who, who basically is injured and is gonna retire, he's sold. Napoleon sells him uh, to the knacker, which is basically the, you know, one who takes old horses and and uh, turns them into various kinds of products like glue. So it's a very ghastly thing that happens. A van pulls up to take Boxer away. Um, and the other animals, it's only old Benjamin who can actually read what's painted on the truck. And he realizes that this is not a hospital truck coming to take Boxer to the hospital. This is, you know, like the glue factory truck. This is, it, this is not a good thing. Boxer has been sold. Uh, as a commercial product, he's been instrumentalized like other things in animal form. Everything gets swept up in this instrumentalizing process. He has been sold, but Squealer comes out and defends this by saying, no, 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 this isn't really what you think it is. Don't believe your eyes, uh, believe me. But of course, the other animals aren't really able to read all that well, which goes back to uh, the earlier point about what does it mean to teach people to read? You can teach them to read your slogans, but not to read a, a sign or an advertisement for the for the glue factory. So in that sense, uh, it's Benjamin who is like sounding the alarm about this. Benjamin finally, you know, uh, gets involved and, and more or less loses it over what's going on on, on Animal Farm. But Squealer squashed that rumor that uh, Boxer had been sold. Squealer then says, no, no, no. I saw Boxer, he was in the hospital, I saw him, and on the poor thing passed away, but rest assured, you know, he was given a decent burial, etc., etc., and his dying breath, on his dying, on his deathbed, you know, his last words were, you know, long live the revolution, animal farm forever, and 
and uh, and then after that, uh, it was noticed that somehow the pigs had uh, a lot of money to buy whiskey.